guys, I am so sorry that I have been MIA so much the last few weeks. I've had a lot going on. I apologize for the crappy surroundings and for looking like crap. But I have zero makeup with me. And here's why. Monday morning at about 7 o'clock, I was still passed out of sleep. My boyfriend was still up. He hadn't been to bed because he only got off work at 6 o'clock in the morning. And the fire department comes banging on our door, <laughs> telling us there's a small fire on the opposite side of our apartment building and that they're just vacating everyone for safety. So my boyfriend comes back, shakes me awake, telling me there's a fire, we need to get out. So I start scrambling, trying to find some warm clothes. I knew we had a cold front come through the uh, previous night and into the morning. So I knew it was going to be cold, so I was trying to find some stuff so I could bundle up and somewhat stay warm. As soon as we get out, we've got our Boston Terrier on her leash. She's out with us, <clears throat> along with everybody else and all their pets. And we come to find out that it's freezing rain coming down at a good clip. So we're in the middle of this 23 degree weather with freezing rain coming down. And there's a fire on the opposite side of our building. We're outside for about an hour, but luckily I had taken my keys and I went and sat in my car <clears throat> just so I could keep my Boston Terrier as well as myself warm. My boyfriend, he was too busy running around like a chicken with his head cut off trying to figure out, you know, what the cause was and stuff like that, but nobody knew yet. So after about an hour, they get it extinguished, finally. So we're able to go back in. There's no significant damage to the building. We're cleared to go back inside. So it took us about, you know, another couple hours to wind down. So about 10 o'clock, we go back to try to get some more sleep. When he wakes up, he putters around the apartment for a little bit, wakes up, and then goes to take him a shower. No sooner than he gets out of the shower and gets dressed, we're getting another bang on our door, and it's from our neighbor that lives above us. He and his family, his wife and his kids, were coming back from getting something to eat. And his wife actually is a police officer here in Bedford, which is where we are holed up currently, even though it's only a five-minute trip from our apartment. But they noticed when they were coming back that they were seeing smoke again, coming from the same apartment as earlier that morning. And his wife, being a police officer, she was calling it in, and he was going around knocking on all the doors, telling everyone, get out. Fire's back, and it's worse. A lot worse. <clears throat> so, here we are again, scrambling to get warm clothes on again and get our Boston Terrier on our leash and go outside. It's still freezing. It's gone up a whole three degrees. It's 26 degrees. And we step foot outside. And this time, you know, he grabbed his keys. And my dog and I, we hopped in the truck so we can stay warm, especially Penny, because she's got this short hair, so she gets cold really easily. So, we're outside for about three hours this time before they finally get it extinguished. And we had four fire trucks. Two from Euless, which is where we live. One from here in Bedford, and then another one from Grapevine, which is to our north. Plus, two ambulances. Two other fire emergency vehicles, not fire trucks. I think one was the chief, and I think one was possibly the fire, the fire inspector waiting for the whole thing to get extinguished so he could go in and determine the cause. Plus, we had two or three police SUVs. <laughs> and even the duplexes that are right across the street from our apartments, people were coming out and just like, hey, what's going on? <clears throat> but... When we stepped out our door this time, we weren't greeted by freezing rain. We were greeted by walking into a vibrant white cloud of smoke. And I mean, it was so dense, we could barely see our cars in the parking lot. And we are not, our door is not far from the parking lot. 
and it's a little bit breezy, so the wind's whipping the smoke one way, and then it'll whip it back the other, and then it'll whip it another way. And it was like walking into a cloud. <laughs> it was horrendous. And to me, the smoke kind of smelt, you know, very metallic, almost like a electrical fire. And where it was a white smoke, I was like, I know electricals, electrical fires, they're usually a blue smoke, but this one was a bright white. So I was like, well, maybe it's still an electrical fire. I don't know. <clears throat> but it smelled very metallic. And we came to find out that it was actually someone's fireplace. We don't know if they just forgot to open the blue or if it was clogged with carbon. I don't see how that's possible because the chimney, chimney sweeps, sweeps were out just a couple months ago to clean all the chimneys and everything. So I don't think it was carbon. I think someone just forgot to open their glue. I don't know. But we actually suffered some decent damage that time on that side of the building. Most of the units, I want to say there's probably about 12 units per building at most. So most of the units were not damaged. They kept it contained to that one corner. So there was only like two units that got damaged. The upstairs one worse than the other one. So the apartment manager, when we finally managed to get someone that could get a hold of her, she came out she contacted the Red Cross, and the Red Cross has put us up here in this hotel room, along with all the other families that didn't have anywhere to go because of their pets and whatnot. And they agreed to put us up for three days and gave us a debit card to use to go toward, you know, getting food and stuff for the next few days. But they only gave us three days in the hotel room. We're on our last day. So... <clears throat> With the update we got from the apartment manager today, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to move back in until, or not move back in, but go home until Friday. They had to shut off power and they had to shut off the water for safety reasons, of course, after the fire. So plumbers are having to come out and fix the plumbing that was damaged. The electricians are having to come out and do some rewiring. Just to make sure, you know, the building is back up to code. So then they have to get the city inspectors out and stuff like that to make sure everything's code compliant and all that. So that's going to be fun. So we're hoping that we'll get to go home on Friday. But that just means that this hotel room is going to have to come out of our pocket tonight. And if we end up not being able to go back home till Saturday, we've got to pay for Friday too. So that's another hundred bucks out of our pocket. Not to count not to count all the meals. We're gonna use what's left on our debit card. We got one meal just because we decided to go out and you know get a decent meal. So we're gonna use what's left to go toward the hotel room and then we're just gonna pay the difference. So that's why I have been missing this week. But I do have a few pictures and I will show them to you as soon as I close this video out, or this voice segment out. So, wish me luck in getting back home on Friday. I'm supposed to get my NYX Cosmetics haul Friday from FedEx, so hopefully when I get home, I'll have a nice little present to go home to. So, just keep me in your thoughts. Wish me luck on getting back home Friday, and I will talk to you guys again as soon as I possibly can. I want to talk to you as soon as I get home. Now, I'll post those pictures. See you later.